You know, there's that expression in journalism that the truth, uh, you know, that democracy dies in darkness. You need the light of truth. It dies in dark money mm -hmm. also. If you could get dark money out, and you can't, yeah, uh, because the Supreme right. Court was really clear on it, and I'll have to see if this court sees it any differently. I'm not sure that it would. Dark money, 100%, mm -hmm. that is a nonpartisan issue. Then you get into the partisan issue of money, which is, mm -hmm. man, do you want to spend a lot of my tax money on these proposals that you and Bernie and others have? Medicare for all, college tuition, maybe even housing, uh, that the Green New Deal that you have, it is all very expensive, especially on the single-payer side, mm -hmm. and that it gives people sticker shock. Mm -hmm. Even in Bernie's home state, they got sticker shock. They couldn't get it done mm -hmm. in his state because mm -hmm. of how expensive it is. And that was an 11 percent increase in taxes, 9 to 11 percent. Even that was too much for people. How do you pay? How do you sell it? Mm -hmm. So, first of all, the thing that we need to realize is people talk about the sticker shock of Medicare for all. They do not talk about the sticker shock of our of the cost of our existing system. You know, in a Koch brothers funded uh, you know study, if any study is going to try to be a little bit slanted, it would be one funded by the Koch brothers. It shows that Medicare for all is actually much more is is actually much cheaper than the current system that we pay right now. And let's not forget that the reason that the Supreme Court upheld the Affordable Care Act is because they ruled that. Even each of these monthly payments that everyday Americans make is a tax. And so while it may not seem like we pay that tax on April 15th, we pay it every single month, or we do pay a tax season if we don't buy, uh, you know, these plans off of the exchange. So we're paying for this system. We Americans have the sticker shock of health care as it is. And what we're also not talking about is why aren't we incorporating the cost of all the funeral expenses of those who die because they can't afford access to health care? That is part of the cost of our system. Why don't we talk about the cost of reduced productivity because of people who need to go on disability, because of people who are not able to participate in our economy, because they have ac because they're having issues like diabetes or or they don't have access to the health care that they need. I think at the end of the day, we see that this is not a pipe dream. Every other developed nation in the world does this. Why can't America? And that is the question that we need to ask. We have done these things before. We write unlimited blank checks for war. We write a two trillion. We just wrote a two trillion dollar check for that tax cut, the GOP tax cut, and nobody asked those folks how are they going to pay for it. So my question is, why is it that our pockets are only empty when it comes to education and health care for our kids? Why are our pockets only empty when we talk about 100 percent renewable energy that is going to save this planet and allow our children to thrive? We only have empty pockets when it comes to the morally right things to do. But when it comes to uh, tax cuts for billionaires and when it comes to unlimited war, we seem to be able to be to, to invent that num that money very easily. And to me, it belies a lack of moral priorities that people have right now, especially the Republican Party.